Hi everyone, I can't be here for this afternoon session, but I made a video to show you the, the demonstration that I did for the morning group. Uh, this is a, an analog synthesizer. It's a modular synthesizer because it's made up of different modules, which are bolted here together onto this frame. You'll see that they have knobs, and then there are these connection points where you use patch cables like this to go from one module to another. To tie this back to the slideshow that you just saw, um, you saw like three or four of the main developments in music, electronic music instrument technology. Um, this is an analog synthesizer, which means that it uses some of the same technology that was used by the Moog synthesizers in the 60s and 70s, except that all of these modules are brand new. They're being currently made uh, by small manufacturers in Europe and in the US. Each module has a different job. For example, these two modules are oscillators, and in the analog world, uh, oscillators create a sound. But that's, that, that's all that they do. You have to then set the pitch, you have to then set how long that sound lasts, and there are other parameters or other aspects of the sound that uh, the oscillators are not involved with. So that's why you have all of these different modules here as well, because they perform some of those tasks. Let me talk a little bit analog and digital, a little bit about those, the difference between analog and digital. Um, Analog electronic instruments use electricity in the sense that, it's, that all of these modules are just shaping electricity. They're manipulating voltages, and that's what produces the sound that you get at the end. A digital instrument is different. A digital instrument calculates a sound almost instantaneously. That's, for example, when you're playing a, a music app on your iPad, or if you uh, play different sounds on a keyboard, all of those sounds are digital, meaning that there are microchips inside the instrument that calculate the sound uh, before it comes out through your headphones or through your speakers. Here, things are different because we're essentially manipulating electricity. Let's get started. And by the way, I'm only using one hand because I have a microphone. I'm holding the microphone with the other hand, so this might be a little bit difficult to do. But let's get going anyways. So first things first, um, we're going to start off with the oscillators. I'm going to take a cable, and I'm going to run it from the oscillator module, which has these outputs here and each output has a little drawing over the top that shows the kind of waveform that the oscillator is producing. So the first output is a sine wave, and you've probably seen this in math uh, and with your graphing calculator. So let's listen to this. As you can see, the sound is rounded. It's also, I'm also playing a pretty low note it's uh, C, uh, it's the C below middle C, I think. Um, or maybe, yeah, it's either below middle C or the octave below that. Um, if we change waveforms, the note doesn't change, but the type of the sound changes. Triangle wave, it's a little bit more buzzy. Saw wave, it's a lot brighter now. And finally, square wave, which also is quite bright. So, that's all well and good, but right now, this is the only note that we have. So, what I do have is, I have off camera, I have a sequencer. A sequencer is a machine that allows me to store uh, a sequence of notes a melody, if you will, and then uh, play that whenever I want. So the sequencer is going to be telling the uh, modular synthesizer what notes to play. And that's kind of what these gray cables are doing. 
this gray cable right here is carrying a voltage that tells that can tell the oscillator what pitch to play. These three cables here are carrying electrical impulses which are really useful in telling the, uh, an, uh, the modular synthesizer when to start or stop a note. So let's patch in the sounds again and then we'll, we'll get started playing the bass line that we want to play. So we have our square wave. Now I'm going to grab another cable, and this is the uh, so this is the incoming pitch voltage, and this is one output, and I'm going to send it to the oscillator. And the note has changed. Has changed. So let me start the baseline sequence. So what's happening here is you have the pitch voltage coming in through the gray cable, and then the black cable telling the oscillator what notes to play. I actually have two oscillators. The reason why I have those is that I can uh, play different waveforms or different pitches at the same time. So, I'm going to take another output here, and I'm going to send it to the second oscillator, right here, so that then the second oscillator will follow along the same pitch. I'm going to stop the sequence right now. The sound still continues because right now there's nothing telling the module synthesizer when to start or stop the notes. So it's just a continuous tone. Let me turn this down. Now, <clears throat> the second oscillator, which is right here, uh, has two waveforms, and it's in French because it's a French manufacturer, but it has a sawtooth waveform, so like that one, and then a square waveform. Since I'm using a square waveform here, I'm going to use a sawtooth waveform just to change things up a little bit. And instead of sending the sound straight to the output module, I'm going to send it over here. And what's going to happen is I have now two inputs here. So this is going to be the waveform from oscillator one on the white cable, and the waveform from oscillator two on this blue cable. So there go both of those waveforms are going in and they're going to be combined together. And then I have two outputs here and I can send that to the other module again. To the output module, excuse me. Again. So let's do that. Let's see what that sounds like. Do you notice that there is an additional sound? Let me show you by detuning the second oscillator. Right? So now, there's another tone. What I want to do is I want to have the second oscillator play at an octave above the first oscillator. So I'm going to retune it. Or I'm going to try my best. I would say that's pretty close. Um, so, let's play the bass line again. That's awesome, but still the, the notes never stop. So we need to do something to tell the modular synthesizer to start and stop the notes at certain at certain points. This is where this module comes in. This is called a, an envelope generator, and it actually generates four envelopes. And envelopes are basically control voltages that would be the equivalent of me turning the volume knob up and down 
at the end of every note, right? So let me play the bass line again. It would get very tiring if I had to do this every time. Right? That I just want to stop the notes. So the envelope generator does that for me. I'm going to grab a cable, another blue cable. Um, I'm not really paying attention to what colors I'm using, mainly the, the length of the cables. Um, so this is the envelope one output. And I'm going to send this envelope one output to this module here that has this funky design. And this is called an amplifier module. And what this does is that it's able to change the volume of the sound that goes into it according to this control voltage. So this is the, inf the input for the control voltage. And now I'm going to grab this blue cable here that is carrying the sound from the two oscillators. And I'm going to put it into the sound input here. And you see that now we have sound going into it. I'm going to take this off because I want to show you something. If I start the sequence again, the bass line, you'll see that these LEDs light up. And they're lighting up when a note is playing, right? And they go on and off. They go on and off. That's because the envelope is telling the amplifier module to turn the volume up, then down, then up, then down, based on when the notes play. So let's put the sound back in. And now I need another cable because uh, I need to grab the sound you see out here. I need to send that back out to the output module over here. So another cable, black cable this time. Check this out. The notes are now defined. Now what's great about the envelope is I have these knobs called attack and decay that allow me to change how the sound behaves, how the volume behaves at the start of the note and at the end of the note. So let me show you how that works. You'll see that the attack affects the beginning of the note, and now the volume is rising instead of just coming straight in. When I turn the attack down, then the note starts immediately. And I can do the same with the end of the note. The note stops, but it kind of decays. And that's why it's called decay. The, the volume of the note decays right at the end. And I can make that long, so that it's endless again, or really sharp. But I'm going to keep it right around there. That's a good line, I think. OK, so right now you're hearing the notes. They sound menacing. The, the synthesizer sound sounds good to my ears. Everything is in tune. But there's not that much of a change in the, the what's known as the timbre or the, the sound quality. Um, and we're going to use another module, this module right here that's currently unused, called the filter. And you'll see what the filter does when I plug in all of the cables. So first of all, the sound isn't going to go into the amplifier module first. It's going to go into the filter first. So it's going to go right here. So let me just recap the kind of um, where the sound is traveling through, because right now you see that we're starting to get just a mess of cables. So, oscillator one is sending a square waveform with this white cable to this module here, okay? Oscillator two is sending, uh, right, oscillator two is sending a sawtooth waveform with this blue cable here. So you have the oscillator one input, or the oscillator one sound, and the oscillator two sound both going into here. And they're being mixed together. And now the output of this mix is going into the filter. And we're not hearing anything because this is the module 
that controls the volume. Right now it's just going straight into the filter, so I have to use another cable. I'm going to use a yellow cable this time, or a green cable. Here we go. So the green cable is going to take the low pass filter output. You'll see that there's a low pass, a band pass, and a high pass. And we're going to try some of these and see how it changes the sound. Right now the sound is unchanged because the filter isn't doing anything. But if I turn the frequency knob down, the volume of the sound isn't changing, but the sound is becoming darker. It's pretty bright here. Then as I reduce the frequency, the sound is dark. This is because the filter is filtering off the high frequencies at the top. And then as I turn the knob, the filtering is going further and further into our sound. Removing frequencies as I turn the knob until we almost have nothing left. So essentially, when you see the term EQ on your iTunes app or um, on any kind of uh, music software, an EQ is a set of filters that affect the sound at, diff at different uh, frequencies. So I kind of want to darken the sound a little bit because we're doing a bass line. But I can also do something else. Right where the filter starts removing frequencies, I can create a volume peak just right there, using this knob called Resonance. It creates what's known as a resonant frequency. You'll see that it's added something that wasn't there before. Right? We've gone from this to now this. Right? And as you, once you have some resonance in there, once you turn the frequency knob, sound is now, it has some movement, it's interesting, you want to know what's happening next. You can kind of build up tension by starting low, then suddenly, or slowly, bringing the frequency up, right. there we go. But what I can do also is I can use a control voltage that then does this automatically without me having to turn the knob all the time. So that's what we're going to do next. Since I have four envelopes, I'm going to use another envelope output, and I'm going to send it into this input here called CV. CV stands for control voltage, because a control voltage isn't a sound, it's just an electrical signal that changes the behavior of a setting inside a module. Now, the envelope is kind of turning the knob for me without me having to do anything. I can change how the setting changes over time. Is it super fast? Does it repeat? So let me show you that. So now it's a much faster parameter change. I can even have it repeat. Now it's almost like the knob is constantly turning. Can slow it down a little bit. Can increase the amount of the change. Almost creates an echo, uh, even though there actually isn't an, e an echo there. But I'm going to put it back to what it was. And that's a pretty good sounding bass line right there. That bass line sounds quite nice. There we go. Now let me show you I'm going to bring in some other sounds from the sequencer to 
to show you how this bass line would fit into a, a wider composition. And again, this is going to be pretty tricky because I have to do this uh, while holding the microphone. So, I'm going to do this. I'm going to bring in a kick drum. So there you go. That is how you can program a baseline using an analog modular synthesizer. And then you can use that with other instruments to create uh, an electronic music composition. Um, so th the iPad actually has an app that is almost like the, the virtual version of a modular synthesizer. You have modules as well in there, and you'll have patch cables, and you'll have to connect these cables um, to different modules and that's what I'm going to show you next in the next video how to do something similar to this but on your iPad thank you for watching <laughs>